Hi and welcome to another episode of UV Buzz podcast and today we have our guest Jackie Chellen who is the deputy director of Library Careers and Inclusivity. Welcome Jackie. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thanks for coming to our podcast. So this podcast the aim is for the students and the staff to get to know more about the library and careers and what it offers to our students, our alumni and the student population in general. So let's begin. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. So uh, let's begin with, uh, can you provide an overview of the services and resources that fall under the library, careers and inclusivity portfolio mm-hmm. of yours and how uh, it, ha- it works in the UB Bristol? Okay, yes, thank you. Um, first of all, it might be useful just to say that um, the overall aims of LCI are to engage the, the users, the students, the staff, etc. Uh, with um, our resources and our opportunities and our expertise. Uh, we, we aim to develop skills and confidence, uh, particularly in our students, uh, to help them achieve their goals. And uh, we're, enabling, we're trying to enable success, particularly for underrepresented groups. So three main aims, really. Uh, so the, the kinds of services, uh, first of all, I thought resources. So obviously we've got a massive library mm-hmm. uh, with lots of print resources, but more and more online resources now, uh, as you know, videos, toolkits, databases, all sorts of uh, resources. We also have lots of different spaces. So quiet, group spaces, small spaces, large, a variety of study uh, activities. Uh, and and for students to engage in um, in, in use of technology as well. And I suppose the the biggest resource really is is our staff. And they're they're the people who who unlock the the space and the resources for the students. So we've got 24 uh, hour inquiry services. Uh, We offer drop-ins, one-to-ones, workshops, bookable workshops, online workbooks. um, And and we take a sort of a coaching approach Mm -hmm. as well to to how we engage with students. And obviously we've got particular coaching skills like our careers coaches and our our peer assisted learning leaders who who are mentors the pal leaders indeed okay so um, we have like library in all of the campuses Glenside uh, Bauer and French as well so how does the library and career service you know department collaborate with other university departments like you know EDI or any other like you know we have various departments in Mm -hmm. uni and how do we collaborate you know uh, to for the major reason of you know to enhance that student Mm -hmm. experience and employable skills and career prospects I mean we we, that, that that's a massive role for us. We absolutely love and, and to engage with with our professional services mm-hmm. colleagues. Uh, for example, uh, in the um, um, ac- academic uh, gov- services team, academic governance team, um, and the quality assurance team, uh, to, to ensure that that we're. Um, on board with, with how the curriculum works, how the programs work and, and what the um, procedures are, um, the validation procedures and such like. But equally with academic staff, they are a massive audience for us. And we spend a lot of time trying to engage with our academic colleagues to try to embed a lot of the, the, the skills development that we do, both academic skills and career development. We, we really need to embed those into the curriculum to ensure that students on every program get some opportunity Mm -hmm. to learn how to write, to learn how to succeed in their assessments, to learn uh, what it what it needs, uh, what they need to to become more employable Mm -hmm. uh, and to improve their graduate outcomes. And by embedding those um, skills sessions into the curriculum, what we're trying to do is to ensure that it's as inclusive as possible because those sessions are in the students timetable. So the students are available to 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 come to them. Uh, but but equally then all the other ancillary workshops and such like are there for extra practice or those students who couldn't make it and we try to run those things at different times so that students who are maybe caring or have got part-time jobs have the opportunity to to engage uh, Mm -hmm. and in the the format that they choose so sometimes online sometimes face-to-face on campus so various options are available according to the needs of students. Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. Students first. Uh, d- yeah, definitely students first. So 
you know uh, with COVID-19 and everything with the increase in focus on remote and online learning how has the library and careers adapted its mm -hmm. services to meet the changing needs of students and especially during like as mentioned the COVID-19 pandemic especially with the integration of technology and online resources yeah well I think um Thankfully, we were quite well ahead with online resources um, before COVID. Um, so we, we've certainly uh, we've had a digital first mm -hmm. approach, uh, partly because we realised that we, we cannot buy books for every student on yeah. every course and we were getting complaints about that so we, we took this more, more of an online approach uh, a bit of ahead of the game compared with some institutions universities actually in terms of our um, uh, agreements and licenses for online content mm -hmm. and so when covid um, kicked in we were quite well ahead we had lots and lots of millions of online mm -hmm. resources uh, so so covid then pushed us to and we also of course had the um, the online inquiry service so yeah. so that was good too during covid uh, and so then as with everybody uh, it pushed us all to teach much more online and better online uh, and so the, the result of that is now that COVID's ended, we're offering both online and on campus um, uh, skills development and, and uh, facilities. But we've found that quite a lot of students are still enjoying the online mm -hmm. opportunities, partly because of their other responsibilities. And so it is much more flexible for them. Uh, so uh, my, my wonderful colleagues in careers and library have, uh, you know, enhanced their online teaching skills. And, you know, they're, they're really expert in, in what they do. And collaborating with academic staff to make what we do uh, as holistic yeah. and, and coherent as possible for the students. The other thing about, I didn't mention about embedding things in the curriculum is, is that colleagues can then tailor uh, what they're, they're teaching okay. to the curriculum, to, to the discipline mm -hmm. area. Uh, and in a lot of cases, a lot of those resources are industry standard. They're the sort of resources that students, once they leave university, will go out and, and encounter in their, in their jobs. So there's, you know, having both the option of having online and offline. I'm pretty sure it has had a lot of students, as you said, with responsibilities and after a pandemic, uh, things have been we are back to normal but you know things have been very different difficult yeah. and different for various yeah. students so having those options is mm -hmm. always yeah. as a student friend, students first university uh, it's I, I think really mm -hmm. uh, appreciated by everyone mm -hmm. and uh, as we mentioned earlier inclusivity so in terms of inclusivity what steps have the university taken to address challenges faced by the underrepresented groups and create a more equitable learning and working environment for staff as well yeah, I think I think there are a lot of uh, initiatives that that the EDI team have, have and, and a lot of initiatives that they've done with the students' union. Mm -hmm. You know, like yep. the history months yeah. and and promoting underrepresented or people through that. And obviously, as part of the library, we've done reading lists and and uh, events, reading events, that sort of thing. Um, those there are initiatives like equity, mm -hmm. uh, which, which uh, en encourage underrepresented students to engage in mentor uh, mentoring and, uh, and uh, talks from role models within the community. Uh, the staff networks as well is, is something that I think is very important mm -hmm. because the, the staff networks have expertise and they challenge all of us, don't they, in terms it of does. you know what we're offering and uh, engage academic staff. The um, EDI Champions Network is a is a more recent initiative, and certainly uh, the uh, Library Careers and Inclusivity uh, staff have really engaged in that, and uh, we have lots of discussions from the um, the monthly um, activities that are uh, d disseminated. And uh, we feed back those discussions through into, into our executive uh, and just generally weigh, raise awareness of um, di people from different cultures, di di people, difference, uh, and, and integrate how we can integrate people much better and avoid our unconscious bias or our, even our conscious bias, maybe. Yep, definitely. I think um, th representing everyone irrespective of who they are what they are from let be students and staff is a much needed one to become a, a one community mm -hmm. here at UAE. Mm -hmm. so 
earlier you mentioned about uh, peer leaders, peer assistant yeah. learning. So, and I've seen them walking around with their <laughs> green hoodies, is it? Uh, yes, I think they're green this time. Yeah, yes. green yeah. hoodies, yes. <laughs> so, can you explain the role and uh, impact of this uh, peer leaders uh, program at UV Bristol? And how do these programs contribute to students' uh, academic success? Right, okay. Um, I mean, the PAL scheme has been going a long time now and, and was set up um, so that students in higher levels in, in their um, program could support students who, who are just entering university. So the PAL leaders are role models, mm -hmm. they're facilitators, mm -hmm. and they are mentors. Okay. Uh, so they are trained uh, quite carefully, uh, and well, recruited and trained carefully, and we've got great representation from um, mature students, international students, you know, who have become PAL leaders, which is... Uh, indicates that they benefited from it too. But most programs at foundation level and level one have some kind of PAL leader uh, um, intervention. Uh, and again, we rely close, uh, heavily on uh, pro uh, academic staff in the program teams to, to liaise on this and to, to um, promote the PAL leaders and to liaise with the PAL leaders about the kind of sessions that they want them to run with the students. Mm -hmm. And so quite often there might be a weekly session, uh, a PAL leader or maybe a pair of PAL leaders working together and they'll, they get feedback from the students who attend as to you know, what they would like to cover and sometimes it, it might be um, help with um, approaching different kinds of assignments or referencing or employability, that kind of thing. Uh, so, so PAL leaders are coming to it with their own experience and um, using coaching approaches. So again, then they're not just telling students what to do and we don't want them to teach as such uh, or give them their assignments to look at. We want them to coach students in, into uh, understanding what mm -hmm. they need to do for themselves and, and, and in the future so they become more uh, independent. Uh, so, so, so that's a key thing actually, you know, generating that level of confidence in students. And we find that PAL leaders themselves as well, the, um, what they learn from, from doing PAL are great employability skills. Definitely. Uh, and uh, they've got a lot to say then in interviews and, and such like, and many of our students' union uh, Staff it's are have been yes. PAL leaders, haven't they? Yeah, so there you go. So as you said, it's like it's not about teaching them; it's more of assisting. At the name says, it is. and I'm pretty sure a lot of students uh, would be really interested to hear yeah, this. Yeah. But also look for like first year, uh, second yeah. year students. Like you know, next year they can apply as oh, a PAL leaders. And, and right at the moment, uh, in February, uh, we are recruiting for PAL leaders. Amazing! Okay. That's a great opportunity. But, Hopefully, but, and there are always sorry to to interrupt, Fares, but there are also roles for PAL leaders, not necessarily related to their program but if they want to help uh, offer workshops on academic skills mm -hmm. or, or well-being that kind of thing and so and in our careers um, our colleagues uh, our careers colleagues are um, developing sort of peer peers for careers Ooh, so, okay. yeah yeah so there's various opportunities yeah. and this library and careers I'm pretty sure these skills are going to be helpful for students like in future when they you know with apply for jobs yeah, and yeah. Uh, stuff that's amazing stuff Jackie thank you mm -hmm. and um, coming to uh, access and learning strategies you know so access and learning strategy department plays a very crucial role here in supporting students with diverse learning needs uh, so what specific resources and services are available uh, to ensure an inclusive learning environment for all students yeah, well, th this has been one of our projects over the past few years. So the Access and Learning Strategies team was a slightly separate team, mm -hmm. uh, but they have uh, skills in... Uh well, supporting students with study skills, but with specialist study skills. So, the, so they've been involved with um, supporting neurodiverse students uh, in their learning. But actually, what we wanted to do was to integrate them into our team that provides study support and study skills more generally, mm -hmm. and careers development skills. And so, so now it, we, so there isn't a distinction in, in that sense. Okay. So that there's a continuum. Uh, if students um, come to a help desk, for example 
people and, and need some support, uh, we can offer them online support, we can direct them to various workshops, we can make appointments for them, and they, they get triaged to the right kind of support. So okay. spe it could be very specialist mentoring, mm -hmm. it could be um, uh, uh, support for um, dyslexic students. So it, it's all part and parcel of a more a larger integrated team, including, of course, international students uh, who, who, in the past, um, we didn't have so much time and effort to devote to, to, to those in terms of the disabled students' allowance. Mm -hmm. That was a different yeah. method then that, that excluded international students to an extent. Now we can offer a much more holistic service to, to stu all, all students, students, but ensure that, that you know they get directed to the, to the appropriate support mm -hmm. at the right time. Definitely. So I think as there are plenty of uh, help here for students to, uh, you know, if needed. So only thing is that students has to reach out. Really. Yeah, and that's key actually, encouraging students to reach out. And, and we, we spend a lot of time evaluating what we do with students, but equally, concerned that maybe we're we're only reaching the students who are prepared to reach out to us and how do we reach out to those other students who, who don't want to come to us but please do you know we, there are all sorts of different ways you can exactly. access us i think that's one of the key reason why i started this podcast so that students uh come because students listen to what are the services options help that they have in ue you know mm -hmm. coming to our last question uh so the study uh, study skill sections uh, in the website library website offers various resources such as workshops cafes and everything else so can you highlight some of the key offerings mm -hmm. and how students can benefit from them in the academic journey okay well i mean a lot of them are can be booked mm -hmm. through InfoHub. Okay. So that's a key resource, actually. Uh, if students are using InfoHub, then they'll see the academic skills workshops, the career development workshops, the career coaching uh, offer, the one-to-one -one sessions with library staff and the um, specialist mentors and tutors. Uh, and so, so th that's really important. But equally, we, we've tried to add in to, to that offer. So now we run things like writing cafes, uh, we, we do reading groups, because uh, reading absolutely fundamental to everything, isn't mm -hmm. it? So uh, confidence with, with that is really important. And um, we, uh, our access and learning strategies team ha has, has developed new ways, um, new workshops and such like, um, thinking differently. Okay. So, so you, know, you, you might not be um, somebody who, who loves reading and writing, but you might be somebody who exp expresses themselves in different ways yeah. and a more visual learner or kinetic learner. So um, the, the, we, we try to offer um, opportunities for students of, you know, who have lots of different types of um, learning mm -hmm. uh, preferences. And um, that's, uh, yeah, uh, one of the more recent things I'm just thinking of is um, academic reading circles or s using scrolls to help students to understand some of the, the, the readings that they might be given. Oh, nice. So, yeah, lots of different things. So uh, it's keeping a track of it, but yeah. Plenty right there, literally yeah. plenty of stuff <laughs> in the library and carriers uh, services, you know, for you as a student to go and approach and ask, ask for help and just support, I think. Plenty of support service here. Uh, and this is where we leave it up, like, you know, hope students listen to this yeah. and staff and staff for them to you know reach out to students whom they feel these yeah. services are needed and students themselves your, your, stu your friends yourself come and take this uh, support service that we have amazing service at UV Bristol thank you Jackie for you coming for much. this that's great to see you thank you it's been a very information uh, <laughs> session for us thank you and until next time okay bye bye bye